Are you ready? All right, let's get started with number one. Host a virtual meetup. We all have a bunch of LinkedIn connections we probably haven't talked to in forever. And if we were to step back and analyze our connections, I'm sure we could find that we have a whole bunch of people we went to school with or a whole bunch of people that we um, have the same skill set as us or a whole bunch of people that are in the same industry as us. There are lots of connections that you can put together. So why not? I mean, in this day and age, we've got all sorts of tools that we can use to virtually connect with people. Why not put together a little group? You know, we're seeing all sorts of people get together and have cocktail hours and, and do fun things to socialize because they can't go be with their friends on the weekends. Well, we can do the same thing right now. How about you get a whole bunch of people together for coffee one morning and say, I want to talk about our industry over coffee. So the 10 of you on this email list, I'm inviting you to a virtual coffee. Here's the link. Let's hang out and let's talk about what you're hearing that's going on in the industry, what's happening in your organization and what you, where you see this is going. Where do you see the future opportunities? Just be the person, the ringleader that puts this all together. That's it. You don't have to have all the answers. I'm not suggesting that you present anything. Just bring people together to talk about a subject related to their industry or their skill set, something that they can all share together. In this day and age, people are looking for those opportunities. So why can't you be the person that orchestrates that? All right, number two, write an article featuring others' expertise. Okay, so most of us, hopefully all of us, are, have, are on LinkedIn, and LinkedIn gives you the opportunity to not only post content in a feed so that all of your followers and connections can see it, but all of us can also write an article. So why not write an article featuring 10 people in your industry that you really admire? You can reach out to them and say, hey, I'm putting together an article about this subject in our industry or about our skill sets or something that's happening, you know, something in the news. You are one of the top 10 people that I admire in the space. Would you be willing to write just two or three sentences about what you think about this so that I could include it in this article on LinkedIn and I will link to your LinkedIn profile? So maybe not everybody's going to read on, but a lot of people will, especially if you don't try to go for super famous people. Again, shoot for people in your network. Shoot, shoot for people that you're already connected to that you really admire and you just haven't developed a relationship. And of course, if you want to be bold and daring, reach out to some people at some companies on your bucket list that you admire and say, hey, I'd like to connect with you because I'd like to get your insights for this article. Just put your journalism hat on and put it together. You've got nothing to lose. The worst thing that can happen is that they don't respond. Who cares? Then they don't get included in your amazing article. But this is such an easy thing to do. Again, doesn't require any expertise on your part. And now you're featuring 10 people. And when you post the article, you get to message them and link to them. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to put it in their feeds. And their thousands of connections and followers are going to see it. And this is how you can amplify your own voice on the platform by serving others. Number three, record a video with a quick tip or question. Look. We're over the fancy production value. For gosh sakes, most people are producing in their home offices, living rooms, bedrooms, wherever these days, and we're totally accepting of it. In fact, I listened to someone the other day who was talking about the, the realism that when you film someplace in your home, uh, in your car, it creates more of a sense of intimacy and that people actually tend to trust you more. So why not turn a camera on and give people a quick tip about something in your industry or something related to your skill set, something that you find yourself constantly coaching your clients on or your employees on or whoever. If you've got something to share, share it. And then at the end, say, what do you all think? What else can you add to it? What, uh, what else do haven't I thought of here? You don't have to be the expert that has all the answers. You can just put it out there and say, well, here's one thing I do, and this is how it helps me save time or improve efficiency or whatever. What do you all do? Get people talking. But put a little video clip out there so that they can see you and hear you. You know, we always hear that a picture is worth a thousand words. Well, I would say a video is worth a million. Such a wonderful way to connect with people. And again, share your expertise and serve your network. All right, moving on to number four. Okay, this is, uh, I don't know why people don't do this every day. I'm gonna get kind of wound up about this one. Comment in detail on peers' posts. So you're in LinkedIn. We've gotten kind of social media lazy, especially on LinkedIn. We look at our feeds, maybe we hit a like button if, you know, if we feel like it. And what does a like really do? What does it really do, folks? You know, uh, on something like LinkedIn, it then puts it in your feed so other people can see it. Okay, fine. 
put this person put this piece of content out there in hopes of generating a dialogue, in hopes of having a meaningful conversation with someone. So why not do it? Comment something thoughtful and detailed. Explain to them why you agree with the article they posted, why the particular point in the video they shared that you liked. Really dive in deep and then ask a question back. Because I'll tell you something, anybody that posts on LinkedIn, when they get a thoughtful response, they read it and they remember who wrote it. And if you ask a question and give them an opportunity to respond, now you've just had a meaningful dialogue and you're completely stored away in their brain as somebody who took the time out of their day to really respond to the piece of content that they so carefully curated to put in their feed. Think about that. It's just going the extra mile. It really does stand out. In a funny way, it's like, have you ever noticed on something like Facebook or some of your other social feeds, the more personal feeds, when it announces your birthday and you see really nice, genuine, happy birthday wishes from people you haven't talked to forever, but meanwhile, the people you talk to every day didn't even respond, really sticks with you who the random people are that wish you a happy birthday. Same situation here. <laughs> when you take the time to really write a detailed response to somebody's post on LinkedIn, you really stand out. It's, it's special. So this is something you can easily do every single day. Moving on to number five. This is a really fun one. Build and distribute a resource list. So there is a gentleman in my industry who took it upon himself to build the most comprehensive contact spreadsheet by industry specialty. So people who are in HR, people who are in outplacement, people who are in benefits consulting, people who are in uh, employee relations, like all these different things. And he put together people's contact information and websites in this massive database that is a Google Doc that you can request to have access to and that he periodically updates. So what he's done over time is built up this massive newsletter. And I'd say probably once a month, he just sends an email out to all of us and says, I recently updated the, the list. Uh, a couple of things you might want to check out. So he highlights anything special, special. I hope everyone's doing well. First of all, he is saving so much of us the hassle of having to do this ourselves. He's sharing his knowledge and he's doing it on an ongoing basis, which automatically puts him in my mind every single month for a really valid reason. And it shouldn't surprise you that when I had a project come up for my company, who did I contact? I contacted him and his company. It was genius. It was absolutely genius. So why can't you do the same thing? I'll give you another example. Hashtags on LinkedIn. Hashtags have blown up. They're now using hashtags as a way for you to have stuff show up in your feed. So if you follow certain hashtags, for example, we have the hashtag JT Talks Jobs. And if you follow that hashtag, anything that we tag, you'll get access to. So it's a way for people to get all our latest career information. Well, you there's so many different hashtags right now, and it's really blowing up on LinkedIn. And you want to choose very carefully which hashtags you're following. Every single week, the number of people following a certain hashtag changes. So you might think that you are using all the hashtags that are most important and more, most relevant to your industry. But as weeks go on and new hashtags that are more relevant get added to your industry, you need to know about them. So at Work It Daily, we have a working list of hashtags and the amount of followers they have. And we send this out to all of our members because we teach our members how to curate and post content on LinkedIn and how to expand their network using hashtags. Because if you use the right hashtags, it increases how many new people see the stuff that you post. We send this out on a regular basis. It's our way to stay in touch with those people. This is all you need to do, folks. Think of a resource list that would need to be updated on an ongoing basis so you would have a valid reason to reach out to people. Start creating the list and inviting people to get your updates. All right, number six, put together an alumni group. So I kind of mentioned to this earlier when I said talk about a meetup, but this is kind of a cross between the resource list and the meetup. So maybe you want to start an alumni group of everybody that... Um, you went to school with, college would be normal, but I'll tell you one that's become really popular, alumni of a certain company. So way back when I worked at this company, an incredible company, <clears throat> it was called Office Specialists, and eventually it was acquired by a company called Ronstad, which is one of the largest staffing companies in the world. But all of us at Office Specialists, before we were acquired, it was a very tight company. We were very close. There were hundreds and hundreds of employees, but we were like a family. So several years after we were acquired by Ronstad, 
somebody in our group reached out and said, I'm going to host an alumni session. Let's get everybody that you know that worked at Office Specialist, send me their email. We're going to put it together and we're going to have a, a breakfast together. We're all going to get together. And after that, we had this virtual list that we could do things with. So why not start that list? You could then do the virtual meetup. You guys could collaborate on some kind of content together. You could do a number of things, but take it upon yourself to get an alumni group going. You could start your own group on LinkedIn and everybody had access there and you could build from there. Be the, the spearhead, be the leader of putting this group together. People will love you for it. They'll appreciate it. And all of a sudden you all have a reason to network together. Number seven, promote the work of companies on your interview bucket list. Okay, so if you don't have an interview bucket list, well, then you can't do this one. But all my work at Daily members, you have one of these because we teach you how to build one. An interview bucket list is the 10, 20, 30 companies you'd most like to work for. And you admire and respect what they do. You love their products, their services, the customers they serve, whatever it is. It's not that you heard they were a good place to work. It's that you really connect with their mission and what they're about. Well, if that's true, you should have no problem sharing their good work on social media. Now, why do you want to do this? Because they're going to see it? Probably not. They're probably not going to see it. That's actually not why you do it. You do it because all the people you network with, your friends, your family, your colleagues, and your LinkedIn feed, for example, they see you promoting it and know why you like it. So when the time comes for you to apply for a job there, you can go to them and if they know somebody, they'll remember that you had that company on your bucket list, that you love that company. So it's more about making your entire network aware what kinds of companies you admire, what products and services you respect. This is how, should they hear about an opportunity and they know about your skill set, they might even come to you and say, I remember that you really loved ABC Corp and what they do for their customers. Well, I know somebody there and I heard they're hiring a digital marketing person and it made me think of you. Have you checked it out? See how that works? See how you can get people literally looking for jobs for you? Well, until you tell them the kinds of companies you admire, until you start promoting and hyping the companies you think are the best, they're not going to know that. So this is a wonderful way to do that. Number eight, use humor to lighten the heaviness in your industry or profession. So this might be an advanced technique. Not everyone might be comfortable with this one. Uh, but there are tools out there, namely, I'll tell you one that I'm using quite a bit right now, TikTok. And on TikTok, all I'm doing is creating short videos uh, to give people, you know, career advice or to make them laugh regarding ironic career situations, ironic job search situations, things like that. It was easy enough to learn to use. The technology is super easy. And I'm able to download those TikTok videos and post them in my LinkedIn feed. And you know, people comment and say, that was really funny. You made my day. You made me smile. You know, that music was great. You can you can um, choose songs and just you know have songs play over and then put captions, things like that. It's a really easy and fun tool. And one, we all need to learn how to use technology anyways. But if not that tool, something else, just put together something short and fun or find something fun. You know, if you don't want to produce content, go find some funny content that relates to your industry or your skill set and add into your feet. People remember that. People remember when you took the time to lighten their mood, especially when it is industry or career specific, right? Because it's kind of the insider joke amongst your peers, that kind of thing. That's a wonderful thing, that kind of humorous club that we're all a part of. And so when you do that, that can really help you stand out. Number nine, start a daily trivia challenge. So every industry and every profession usually has some data points around it. And I'm sure that you could pull those together. And how fun is that for you to post a question every day and you know see who can answer it first or who can answer it right? You know, there's always those in social media, I always see those posts where they say, see if you can do this math equation. And then, you know, 86,000 people comment and they all have a different answer to the equation. Very fun, right? But it gets you engaged. Well, you can do the same thing in your profession or in your skill set. And not only is it fun, it gets all the people that are your peers, you know, trying to answer and engage. It, it's very memorable. And you're educating people who aren't part of your industry or skill set on it as well. So it's a very fun way to kind of gamify your networking and, uh, you know, easy enough to do. doesn't take a lot of time. And finally, number 10, doing a next level reference. So, um, a reference or a recommendation, as it's called on LinkedIn, is when you post something about somebody 
and it will show up on their LinkedIn profile. Now, the reason those are a good thing is because it's they can track it. So if a recruiter is looking at a LinkedIn profile and there's a recommendation there, they can click on the recommendation and see who on LinkedIn wrote it. So there's a legitimacy to it. Whereas these days, most people won't bother if you say, well, I've got a letter of references or I've got a letter of recommendation, a written one. They won't take it because you could have made it up. So they want some sort of trackable way. So recommendation on LinkedIn is great. But let's take it a step further. Go through your LinkedIn connections, find somebody you really admire, what you love about them, and then if possible, find a picture of the two of you or take a picture of the two of you, right? Don't tell them what you're doing. Take a picture, find an old picture, whatever it is, post it, and then in a long form, write why you admire them so much. Write what they taught you as a professional, how they've made you a better professional, a better person, um, you know, what makes you smile about them, um, why you feel lucky to know them, maybe a funny story about how the two of you met and got to know each other. Just tell the journey of your relationship and put them on a pedestal. That's what I mean about next level. Put them on a pedestal. I can tell you that, first of all, it says about a lot about you to take time out of your day to really do that for somebody. Everyone reading your profile is going to go, oh, gee, I wish he or she did that for me. That's so thoughtful. And, and boy, they really care for someone. Secondly, the person that receives it, oh my gosh, mind blown. How does that make you feel to have somebody go to that length to compliment you and to recognize you, right? So talk about a feel-good factor. If you did that oh, a couple times a week, wow, just a wonderful thing, okay? So there you have it, right out of the gate, 10 unique and fun ways that you can network during a crisis. They're all about giving. They're all about connecting, having meaningful conversations, and really la you know, making a strong impression. And I just want you to remember that because people really do remember who makes an impact on them during a crisis. You know, I think it was Maya Angelou that says that people don't remember what you did, but they remember how you make them feel. Does that, I think that's the phrase. And if you really think about that when it comes to networking, having a deeper impact, going the extra mile, doing something inventive, innovative, different, doing more than the just I'm checking in, that's what it's about, folks. The bigger the impact, the more memorable you are, the stronger your network. And you can do this. We got the time, we got the resources, and now no excuses, you've got the ideas. <laughs> so I really wanna hear from all of you, especially all of you that are live with me today. Which one are you gonna do? Everyone in the comments right now, I want you to tell me which one of these you're gonna try first so that I know that you're gonna take your networking efforts to the next level, okay? 